The thing is, the Tunnel Creek has pretty much cut the town in half. But the folks there, they're resourceful. They've come up with a way to deal with it that's pretty unique. It's not that the people of Pumpkin Center like to ignore road closed signs, but they don't have much of a choice. And this is the problem. Recent storms have turned Tonto Creek into a rushing river, effectively cutting off 800 residents from work and school. I thought it was really scary. Yes, more than 20 kids a day use this five-ton army truck as a school bus. Johnny Ketchum is their principal. He says he doesn't sanction the olive drab bus, but won't stop it either. This is it. That, that, this is the only way. Before they started making this run, we were losing 20 kids a day. That's about a third of our school. All aboard, all yeah. aboard. George Ewing is usually the man behind the wheel. Why? Someone has to do it. But he is well aware of just how precious his cargo is. That's why he checks out every run himself first. I run my kids, my grandkids, and all the other kids. I would rather them ride with me than anybody I know because they trust me and I will not put them in danger. So the green line rolls on because without it, these folks would be high and dry. Well, the green truck slash bus runs four times a day, twice in the morning, twice at night. It's free of charge. It was actually donated by the uh, Tonto Apache tribe because the bus they used to use was built in 1943. It was pretty much on its last leg. So they're just hoping down there, Beverly, that they don't get as much rain as they did before because if they get too much rain, even that truck won't be able to cross that creek. Same thing, different year. It is Mother Nature's broken record. The rains come in, Tonto Creek goes up, and the 1,000 or so folks on the water's east side go nowhere. We've been promised a bridge for 20 years. But there is no bridge over the Tonto. Leaving a three-hour drive on a rough dirt road is the only way to all the things people take for granted. We're out of milk and bread and eggs, eggs. and stuff like that. The water keeps Russell and Diana and little Serenity Meixner away from grocery stores and from their jobs in Payson. Right now our jobs are in jeopardy. My boss called yesterday and said that if I wasn't at work today, I might not have a job. What do you tell him? I told her there was nothing I could do about it, that as soon as I got a, could get across, I would. Children also miss school, which is on the other side. I, I'm hoping and praying that they get a bridge in. The bridge Cassie Jump is hoping for would cross the swollen Tonto Creek, bringing help to her family if they need it. Andrew, you've got a medical condition. Yes, I do. So does my son. Both Ian and Andrew Jump rely on oxygen tanks, tanks that come from the other side of the impassable creek. Are you getting low? Yes, we're getting very low. Now, Mom, both your boys here are suffering. What's your feeling on that? Uh, it hurts a lot. It's just getting to the point where people are losing their lives, and we're risking our families and uh, trying to get our kids to school, uh, that something needs to be done. We're risking our lives and our kids' lives to be able to get them to school because we don't have a bridge or some other form of transportation where we could safely cross the creek. How many more people have to die before somebody steps up to the plate? Are you worried somebody's going to try to get across there again? I worry about that every time the river runs. This truck was no match for the rain-swollen creek, but there are always a few who think somehow it's worth the risk. It was three years ago when this front end loader flipped in the Tonto, killing Kathy Thibodeau's husband, Tim, and best friend, Mike Nolan. She still worries every time someone tries to beat the rushing water. What do you tell people when they go across? It kills me. It hurts me so bad to see them cross and take their life. Come, girl. Come. Come on, you. Come on, you. 